Well, welcome to the Story of Liberty. This is John Bona, and we're here with Twyla Paris. Uh, good morning, Twyla. Good morning. How are you guys? Right, we're so we're doing great. Uh, we're so excited you're coming to Vero Beach, uh, March third, Thursday, March third, for the Vero Beach uh, prayer breakfast. Yeah, I'm very excited about coming too. Really looking forward to that. That's great. Yeah, it's coming up here quick. We're uh, closing in within three weeks now, and the Mm -hmm. ticket sales are going really good, so there'll be a nice big audience there for you. Well, that's wonderful. Looking forward to... um, I had some distant relatives who lived in Vero Beach, and I've always heard a lot about the area, although I'm not... I've been close, I think, but I'm not sure if I've actually been there before, so really looking forward to it. You know, everybody knows somebody in Vero Beach. and that funny? It is funny. Ann Graham Lotz uh, spoke here, and their whole family, the Graham family, used to vacation here, and and they knew the, they knew the corner grocery store. They knew who worked there. It was kind of funny. Yeah, that's hilarious. Is it kind of a retirement? You know, after, here, at least yeah, by? after five o'clock. I mean, you don't see a car. <laughs> it it shuts down. You know. It's, well, it's I mean, we have some retirement communities close by here, too, so I understand that. But I think, you know, maybe that's why everybody knows someone there. <laughs> I think you're right, yeah. <laughs> and we got a, and we have a, we're blessed with a lot of young families, too, like Jenna here and her family, my daughter. Oh, it's and, a great place to raise a family. Quiet, safe, peaceful. It's perfect for, for raising uh, a young family. Now, Twyla, I got to... There's a whole bunch more people to move there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, many, uh, many of the days I was thinking, Jenna, when we used to drive uh, our kids to school, what what music did you hear? I grew up listening to your CDs every morning. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I'll have to tell you, when my sister and I heard that um, you were going to be coming, we both cried and got so excited because your music just reminds us of our childhood. And it's it's just wonderful. Oh. You know, it's great. <laughs> And, you know, my mom used your music um, when we were growing up to help bring us closer to the Lord. And so that's a real important thing in our family is your music. So you know, you I just think, wanted to thank you for that. How many families uh, around the country could say that where they actually, the parents were driving their kids to school listening to your music? And it's a real testament yeah. of your, your music, Twyla, how many people it's blessed. And, oh, it has. Well, it's so wonderful to hear that. You know, I I would say of all of the people who... Um, discipled me and spoke into my life. It would be my parents, in particular my dad. He was my pastor. And people who know me well and know him well would comment from time to time over the years, oh, I recognize some sermon or some teaching of your dad in that song. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I almost feel like I got to be, you know, just a little bit of a, a conduit there to to pass some of those things along that were given to me to just pass them on to others. So that's a real honor and a privilege to hear that. Did you actually have a musical family, so to speak? Uh, Is that your background? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, I would say my dad was musical, my mom, not so much. So, you know, like many families, it kind of comes from one side. Um, But my dad was, although he was a pastor and a minister, that was his primary calling, but he was also a very accomplished musician and a songwriter as well. And this is something I didn't even know when I was younger, but as I got older, I began to learn that my grandmother, his mom, my dad's mom, had also written songs just in a very informal way, but she grew up in a family that was involved in full-time ministry as well. <clears throat> and she would write songs and they would they would preach and sing together and and travel from town to town and um, and minister to and and start churches and and then when a church was flourishing they would move on to another town and so the music and the ministry in tandem you know working hand in ta- in hand in hand like that is I guess something that really has been in my family and just passed down through teaching, you know, certainly there was practice, 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 you know, (laughs) but also in a way just through osmosis, you know, how you, you know, Jennifer, here you are on the radio doing an interview with your dad, you know, those things that we just learn Mm. because we grow up not just by them, not just near them, but in them, you know, so that's a a wonderful thing, isn't it? It is. It's a blessing. You know, one of the things, speaking of your songwriting that I found very interesting is that I read that some of your songs have actually become hymnals in churches. 
Well, there are some songs that have that have been included in in hymnals, yes, and of course, that's not something you would ever that I ever set out to do. I mean, I wouldn't right. have thought of that. <laughs> I don't think anybody but, could set out to incredible. do that. That's that's quite amazing. But you know what? It's um, whether the song is in a hymnal used in worship, or whether it's just right. you know on a screen in front of the church used in worship. I think that's one of the most um, deeply satisfying things to me, you know, a, a, an award or a song on a chart or sales or all of that, you know, that's, it's, it's encouraging, of course, but, and it's a sign that, that hopefully people are being ministered to by your music, but those things are, are fleeting, you know, they're temporal. Mm-hmm. But one of my favorite verses that's really been a life verse for me is Romans eleven thirty six four from him, through him, and to him are all things, to him be the glory forever. And a long time ago, one time, one day when I was reading that verse, it's like I just pictured sort of a cycle of giving, like everything that we have, everything that we are and can do, our abilities, our gifts. It comes from the Lord. And I think songs, not just the ability to write songs, but the songs themselves, the ones that matter, we always can tell the ones that we sort of contrived mm-hmm. and the ones that really were inspired, you know? Yes, yes, <laughs> and that's so correct. the songs that really were inspired, it's like, okay, they were gifts from the Lord. So then I, or any other songwriter, you know, takes that song and records it or sings it live or whatever, somehow offers it to the body of Christ at large. And then when they take that song and they say, oh, this is something we feel like we could offer back to the Lord in worship, and they use it in worship, it's like it's completed its cycle. You know, it's been given back to God, you know. And so anytime I hear of a song being used in worship, you know, whether it's some missionary who came home and told me that some remote you know, tribe was singing some worship song that I had written in a language that I've never heard, or whether it's in a hymnal, to me that is absolutely the most satisfying, gratifying um, thing that I can hear. So Wow, that's pretty amazing. It's great, too, that you... I can tell, hear your heart that you recognize that it really is a gift from God, Mm -hmm. your beautiful voice and, and the ability to write these songs and create the music. Yeah, I, I was doing a little research on, on Google. On, you had 33 number one hits. I never realized you had so many. Do you have a favorite song? Is one, or one of those songs um, it kind of you know, stands out to the way you just explained uh, something, the gift that God gave you that you gave back uh, to his people and him? Is, is there one song that you have that is kind of your favorite? You know, um, as you're going along through the years and you're writing the songs, the latest one you wrote is always your favorite, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, you get to a certain point and you start looking back, and um, I-, I would say that How Beautiful has surfaced for me as a favorite. And I think that's because when you think about what it's saying, um, it really is this describing who God is and what he has done for us and what he is doing in us, you know, and who who we are called to be and we're called to reflect who he is. So really just the, it's the core, the central message of our faith, you know. And there's another song that's kind of like right up there for me too, which is Lamb of God. And when you think about it, they're both about that same, you know, they go out in different ways, but they're about that same thing. Uh, yeah, I guess How Beautiful would have to be right at the we, top for me. We actually played um, both those songs on our last show, so that's perfect. Um, ah. So our listeners have gotten to hear it if they hadn't heard your music before. But if they would like to hear it again, they can uh, go to the storyliberty.net and check our podcasts. You know, recently, too, I've, we've met people that um, are trying to develop their uh, music career and their music abilities and, and even songwriting. I mean, do you have any... Uh, advice for somebody like that that is is really trying to kind of break through and uh, help their career? Well, a couple of things, and they're not really either one logistical, I guess, and really things have changed uh, so dramatically from the time that I started as far as what you would actually 
do on a practical level, you know, to to get started in in music to where things are now. It's just so different because of technology and all that. Um, but I still think a couple of things are true, and that is especially for someone in Christian music. It's, you know, my dad challenged me to, when I said I want to be involved in music, I think I was about 17. You know, I think the Lord is calling me to do Christian music. Um, well, go out and pray and write down your vision and your message. <laughs> oh, that, that's a, good, a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so having a sense of, you know, not just, hey, I'm a Christian and I love music, so I guess Christian music, you know, so, but really have a sense of, is God leading me to do this? Is he calling me to do it? What is, what specifically is he calling me to do and to say? And then you really want those people that God has placed in your life as protection, um, your parents, uh, pastors, you know, whoever the the spiritual leaders, those people who speak into your life, you know, with God's wisdom. You want them to be confirming that as you move forward. And then the second thing that I would say is I've heard a lot of different people's stories, people who are ministering in music on a national or international level. Every single one of them is different. But the one thing I've noticed they all have in common is that they were doing what God had called them to do on a very small scale. On whatever level they were on, they were being faithful in the little things. And then God opened the door, the next door, and then the next door, and the next door. And another thing I've noticed along the way is the doors that seemed like they should just open easily to me often, almost always, didn't. And while I'd be standing there sort of wondering why I couldn't push that door open, you know, another one would open and I would practically fall through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) And, And so it's just a matter of being faithful in the little things and prayer, you know, and asking God for his wisdom and guidance and for him to open the doors that he sees fit to open. So... I know that's not, you know, like here's step one, step two, step three, but it's just what has, what I have, you know, felt that I've learned, observed to be true over the years. Well, when God calls you to something, it's never a straight line. It seems like it's always quite a journey up and down, up and down. And uh, Mm -hmm. it's not always a bullet point list of uh, what to do. As you were describing that, I was thinking, (laughs) sorry, I was thinking of... uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians 3, 3, 3.13 that talks about that our work will be tested by the fire. In other words, the fire will test actually the quality of each person's work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as you mm-hmm. wonder, when you were describing that, uh, the things that we do in life for the Lord that, you know, we're really just praying about it and doing it. We wa- I wonder how many of those things really uh, are, are his will. And uh, we hope they all are, you know. Mm-hmm. But one day we'll find out which things that we mm-hmm. did were not really his will. I thought, even though they were good things uh, on earth by earthly standards, you know, um, it's it's kind of interesting. I've always thought about that verse. Uh, it's it's very compelling. Yeah. yeah, and there's no, there's really not any point in us drawing out a blueprint. Is there for our lives? Because, <laughs> you know, because things will happen, the things that we really are supposed to do, as you're saying, they'll happen in his way, in his time. And really, that's what we want, right? That's what we want to be praying for all along the way. So hopefully, we won't be doing as many of those, you know, pointless things that aren't really what God, you know, wasting our time, really, if we're doing something besides what he has for us in that moment, no matter how good it might seem. Right. God is sovereign, and he, exactly, and we trust Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, have you ever experienced, um, I guess that you, you call it musician block or writer's block. Is that, is that something real? Like you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're praying about, I, I would think it is, uh, right? Yeah. I, I don't, I wonder if there's anyone who writes in any form, whether it's music or books or whatever, who hasn't experienced that in one way or another. You know, I always kind of felt like, um, you know, on one side of things, I would feel like, okay, 
you'd spend a season writing. For me, it, it's different. You know, different people go about it different ways. Um, some artists would basically not write until it was about, you know, two or three months until time to record, and then they'd just lock themselves away and write and write and write. I wasn't like that. I would just sort of write in and around life, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> as I went. And I never really knew, you know, I was dependent on that moment of inspiration as a writer. And when it came, I then I'd better go find a quiet place, you know. <laughs> and whether it was, you know, on the, you know, on some scrap of paper on an airplane scribbling down lyrics or if I was hopefully at home and could go get to my piano. Um, but so I'd write for whatever the time was between projects, whether it was a year or a year and a half. And then I'd record, and that would all get done. And the minute, you know, we finally finished the last note of the last mix and signed off on everything, I would feel like um, someone just stuck a blank piece of paper in front of me. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay, (laughs) now what have you got for us? (laughs) Yeah, I I know that feeling. (laughs) It's just like, oh. I mean, it's never easy, is it? I would imagine your career, 33 number one hits, you did this over and over, right? I mean... Well, and that's the thing. And so you always... And there was great freedom, and you probably noticed this too. And by the way, we watched Monumental as our whole extended family, kids and all, we, we watched it together one night. Oh, oh great. Over a year ago now and, you know, and loved it. Probably need to watch it again because there's so much information in there, right? <laughs> you can't keep it all, you know, oh, in your head. But... um yeah, it's for me, and I kind of lost my train of thought there. But just, but just the that creative process is. Oh, I know what I was saying. The first time you're writing, before you do that first movie or that first album, there's great freedom because there's no expectations. So you're just writing and writing, and it's so fun. You're enjoying it, you know. And then the first album gets out there, and especially if there's an album that people respond to, and then it's kind of like. You feel like not just that blank piece of paper paper in front of you, but the record company and all the people, and you're just kind of sitting there going, "Okay," just kind of like drumming their fingers on the table, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so the pressure, if you're not careful, it can start to grow. Is the years, you know, like every time you do it, okay, that's okay, we got it done. But now I feel drained, and I feel like I'll never write another good song as long as I live, and 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 I just became. It became actually a quite a difficult thing for me in my life, you know, kind of an anxiety was sort of underlying everything. And I, there was just a point where I just had to come to the place of saying, Lord, you know, as long as you are giving songs, you know, then I'll be faithful to do, you know, to do with them what I'm supposed to do. And if at some point you're not, then that's a signal that I'm supposed to be doing something else and I'm just going to rest in you. This you know, mm. this came from you in the first place. It belongs to you. And, and so that really, not that I wouldn't ever have a moment, you know, that's how we are as humans. But that became my touchstone, you know, of coming back to that and just giving it to the Lord because it was His anyway. And I am dependent on Him for that inspiration. So so rest in Him, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to um, say real quick, if you would like to purchase tickets for the prayer breakfast, you can go to VeroBeachPrayerBreakfast.com, and on there you can pick out your seat on the chart. And uh, tickets are $30. We're having a full breakfast catered by 2Js. It starts at 7.30 a.m., and we have ample parking this year at the Indian River County Fairgrounds. So you can go to VeroBeachPrayerBreakfast.com to purchase your tickets. Twyla, we're so excited you're coming and uh, to beautiful Vero Beach. You're coming at a perfect time of year, by the way. The w- weather's beautiful. I was just curious. Uh, right now, are you um, are you still writing songs? What are you currently doing? Well, right now, my full time job has been for quite a few years. I'm a homeschooling mom, and because I yay do, homeschool. <laughs> yes, yay homeschool. Did you guys homeschool too? <laughs> yeah, we homeschool all four of ours. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep. Yeah, well, I can't say enough good things about about that. It is, you know, all those teachable moments and 
you know, they have them right there with you, right? And you can't predict when those are coming. And, and I'll so, tell you, it's very hard to do anything else when you're homeschooling your kids. It is a full-time job, and it is worth every minute. It can be, and yep. I've been active, too, in the homeschool community here where I live. And, That's you awesome. know, we have... Our son is almost 15 now, and we have over the years since he was born, and since we've been, we homeschooled from day one. Um, we do still, I go out and, you know, travel from time to time, and we've done it some as a family. We've done some tours as a family, but, well, that's great. you know, as, especially in certain years, in a certain season, as they get more, you know, higher up in school, you know, I have to be judicious about how much I travel. So really, I, 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 for a long time, I referred to myself as a working homeschooling mom, you know, because I, <laughs> I do still do a fair amount, you know, in music and with other responsibilities and still homeschooling. So it it occurred to me one day, I was, you know, why am I always just kind of running in circles? Because I'm not just, I'm a working homeschool mom. Yep, you, know? you can't get and busier I have than that. <laughs> a few other of those, you know, some people have the blessing of just being able to just homeschool. Yep. <laughs> and... Um, but you know, whatever God gives us to do, you know, he, he makes those moments and makes it all sort of dovetail and work in together. And then, and then I think our kids do benefit by getting us to watch us, you know, and be a part of what we're called to do. So yeah, that's the primary right now and just loving it <clears throat> and starting to realize because he is almost 15, you know, we're in high school now and you start going, Oh, wait a minute, we were just in second grade, what happened? And you, so you start to get a little bit um, nostalgic, you know, about how quickly it all goes. Well, Twyla, thank you. We really appreciate all your time. We know uh, you, you probably have a homeschool class waiting right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're really looking forward to you coming to Vero Beach here on uh, Thursday, March 3rd. Uh, we'll have a great tuned gray, baby grand piano for you and... <laughs> Uh, a couple thousand people, and so it's going to be a great morning. We're really thankful you're coming, and uh, uh, stay in touch uh, between now and then. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. God bless you guys. God what bless you. you. It was so nice talking to you. And you can get your tickets at VeroBeachPrayerBreakfast.com. Hello, it's John Bona, and it's that time of year. It's time for the 12th annual Vero Beach Prayer Breakfast. It'll be held Thursday, March 3rd at Indian River County Fairground. He is exalted, the King is exalted. Twyla Paris is providing all the inspirational music, and Tony Perkins will be our keynote speaker. Hope to see you there. Come on out and enjoy a full breakfast catered by 2 Jays. You can purchase your tickets at VeroBeachPrayerBreakfast.com. I will extol you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Hey! Okay.